Hey everyone, it's Max from Square Up. I've been creating cardistry videos both on my own and with the boys for the past 10 years. Let's talk about how to edit your cardistry videos. I'd first like to mention that this is how I've learned to edit from my experience. By no means is this the only way to do it. Before we dive in, you'll need a video editing software that can both cut and rearrange music files and video clips. Currently I use Adobe Premiere Pro, but I use Sony Vegas for years. There are lots of great editing softwares out there that you can check out. DaVinci Resolve and Lightworks being two free examples. Now let's start by assuming that you've already filmed your video and you have your raw video clips ready to edit. You might make a video teaching how to film cardistry one day. I don't know, we'll see. My editing process has four steps. The first being the setup, the second being the arrangement, third is putting on your finishing touches, and fourth is rendering. Let's start with the first step. Your goal is to end up with performance clips of each of your moves. It's by far the most tedious part of the editing process but doing this well creates a strong foundation for the rest of your video. Start by uploading your clips from your camera to your computer. Then open them up in your editing software. Watch each raw video clip individually and find the best performance of each of your moves. A good habit to get into is to stop the video clip when you think you hit the move. This way, you can bet that the last performance of each video clip will be good enough. But personally, I like to watch through every performance of each clip to make sure that I'm not missing anything. You never know, you may find a performance from the middle of the raw video clip that you like more. While more laborious, watching each performance of every video clip guarantees that you'll end up with the best possible footage that you can. If you're having trouble deciding between multiple performances, try playing them back to back from one another. It'll be easier to decide which one you like the most. Also, if your footage is shaky and your editing software is capable, try stabilizing your footage. This makes a huge difference in overall smoothness of your camera movement, how clear your moves are to the viewer, and just overall how professional your video comes across. Before we move on to the next step, let's talk about music. In general, you're looking for a song that has the potential for a short intro, a cool part where most of the cardistry will happen, and a short ending. There are lots of conventionally good songs out there for cardistry, but I'm a strong believer in you can really make anything work. It just depends on how you approach it. Check out this snippet from Connor's Chicago Brooklyn video from back in 2015. Now compare that to the trailer we made for our first Cardistry DVD. Yeah, I know. I prefer to have a song in mind prior to filming so that I can envision what the video will look like, but this is not required. It's totally fine to choose music after you've filmed. Once I have my clips cut and I'm left with just performances of each move, I'll move on to the arrangement. Your first clip doesn't necessarily need to be the most impressive move from your video, but you do want to pull your viewers in. You want them to think, that was pretty sick, what's up next? After that, try out different moves in the second slot of your video. Once you find something you like, move on to the third slot. So on and so forth until you run out of video clips. When I'm going through this process, I try to think about which move works best with a specific part of the song. If I were to have a slower paced move, then a slower part of the song is probably the best place to use it. Vice versa for faster paced moves. I got some excellent advice from Henrik Forberg back in 2012. You want it to look like your hands are playing the music. In other words, try to synchronize your camera shot changes and your hand movements with your chosen song. I personally like to find a clap or an 808 to transition to the next video clip. For example, once you're satisfied with your performances, their arrangement, and the music, you can go ahead and start putting on your finishing touches. Adjusting elements of color correction, like brightness and contrast, contributes to making your video look natural. Adjusting color grading, or adding tints or color tones to your clips, contributes to the atmosphere of your video and kind of gives it an overall unique vibe. Getting into more advanced territory, you can always try adding effects and animations. While we won't be covering specifics in this video, you can always explore what's possible with your software by doing some research online. Finally, let's wrap up with rendering. It's very important to render your video with the same settings that you filmed with. So for example, if you filmed at 1080p at 30 frames per second, you want to render it as such. I know I've made this mistake lots of times. Once rendered, watch your video one last time to make sure that everything looks good. Maybe even show a friend to see what they think. At the end of the day, the whole editing process involves lots of trial and error. 
Sometimes you get real far into a video and realize that you want to refilm something, and that's okay. Being patient with this process is key. You want to put out the best material that you can. Just like with cardistry, the more you do it, the better you'll become. That's gonna be it for me today. If you have any questions about anything I talked about in this video or really anything cardistry related at all, leave us a comment below. Here are some similarly styled videos from both Dom and Connor that are both great watches if you're interested in cardistry. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.